Good afternoon. Welcome to Sports Nothing But Sports with Kent Sterling for Tuesday, January 14th, 2020. Brought to you by the great people at Today's Dentistry, 317-849-2933. Dr. Mike O'Neill has been my dentist for the last 26 years. He's the best at what he does. If you're going to hire people, what the hell? Hire the best, right? Hire a great dentist. That's Dr. Mike O'Neill. All you have to do is call. Again, that number, 317 849 Two nine three three. Let's talk sports first, and then we're going to talk some media. We got some news, and I think it's bad news for the city of Indianapolis media-wise. But sports first, the Pacers, they got a win last night. They beat the Philadelphia 76ers. It wasn't a pretty win, but a win is a win, and you don't argue with winning. Let's talk to the great T.J. McConnell. T.J., you like being mic'd up? It was my first time. Um, just tried to be myself. Um, I, didn't, I didn't really mind it, just... Just trying to tell others to watch what they say um, when I'm mic'd up. So it didn't change your behavior. That's the way you are all the time. I think for the most part, that's how I am. Um, just try to keep the mood light. And I know a lot of those guys in Philadelphia, so it was just good to see them. That moment where you get the bucket, really tough shot, like a fadeaway on the baseline, and then you hustle back and get a steal. Those moments that you seem to author with some frequency, they change games, don't they? Yeah, I just, I love getting our crowd involved like that. It was really rocking after that play and um, just try to really bust my butt and make those type of plays as much as I can. Um, you know, credit to Justin, you know, you know, obviously catching the pass and finishing it like that. And um, it's just a good all around play. Talking to Simmons about the football game last night and how you were for Clemson, and obviously he's an LSU guy. Is that you joking around with a guy, trying to get in a guy's head? How much of that is kind of malevolent, and how much is you reconnecting with a guy with whom you were a teammate? Yeah, that, it was it was all joke. Um, he didn't look like he, he, no. So he he kind of smirked after you know the the camera panned away, um, but. It's it's just good to kind of see a, a teammate and a friend, um, you know. I get I got to see those guys two times in the last what two weeks, and um, just teasing him about you know the Clemson LSU game because I know he would have done the same to me. The first game against those guys on New Year's Eve that was a beautiful game for you guys. Everything seemed to be in rhythm, and then last night was completely the opposite. It was kind of ugly, and nothing seemed to be working. And yet, you guys found a way to tough it out and get a win. Is that part of the character of this team? Yeah, absolutely. I think we're we're really growing up game by game, and um, that's a sign of a good team. That when you know your opponent's playing ugly. And you just happen to be playing ugly that night as well. The fact that you can grow up and make plays on the stretch and get a win in that kind of game shows a lot of maturity. You got Minnesota in kind of a back-to-back. You're at their place, and then they come here. It, it, what are the specific challenges of doing that? Kind of just honing in on the game plan, um, just focusing focusing on their tendencies and, and going out and playing our game offensively. We've got to get out and run. You know, and that starts at the defensive end, though. We've got to get some stops, and, and when we do that, we're pretty dangerous in transition. Do things have a tendency in the second game to get a little bit chippy because maybe some things get out, not out of hand but competitive in the first game? Yeah, you can almost look at it as a playoff-type two-game stretch where you play, night off, play, um, and it's the same team. So um, we just got to kind of be focused in and um, do what we do. You seem to be a likable guy with opponents as well as teammates. Is that an easy line to walk where you're liked, but you're still competing your ass off against these guys? I mean, I think everyone knows the way I play. I really compete. And at the end of the day, at the end of the day, I'm, uh, you know, just trying to keep it light, like you said. Um, That's who I am personality-wise and... um, that's how I'll always be. With, like, Butler and Warren the other night, you kind of joked around with Butler, maybe trying to diffuse things a little bit because you guys were teammates last year. When he harbors the level of ill will he does at the end of the game, is that kind of who he is? Jimmy? Yeah. Uh, Jimmy's not that type of person. Um, I think it was an unfortunate situation on both sides. TJ Warren and, and Jimmy Butler are both great people and great teammates. Um, it's just 
sometimes the, your competitiveness gets the better of you, and I think that's what happened. That's T.J. McConnell. I think he's an important cog to this team because over 82 games, you're going to have some lulls where uh, attitudinally guys are trying to figure out exactly what they're doing and what motivates them to play today again. 82 games, it's a long time. Pacers, they're on their way to Minnesota. Let's talk to Nate McMillan about T.J. McConnell and his importance to that team. Over an 82-game season, how important is the energy and kind of the noise from a guy like T.J. McConnell? I mean, that's, uh, you know, T.J. has done a good job for us uh, this season, really changing the tempo uh, when he comes into the game. And, you know, I think that's when you can, when you can get that from a uh, player or group, uh, I think that's always good. They're different than the first unit. Um, you know, the, the, the game, the intensity seems like it picks up. Uh, the, you know, the energy, he's, you know, we, we're calling him an injection. Uh, you put him out there and, and, and uh, let him go after it. And he's been able to do that with his pressure, uh, you know, establishing a tempo. Uh, for that second unit, and uh, he's done a good job. I thought he, he had a couple big plays last night uh, where he uh, lifted us, you know, coming off the bench, um, scored, got a steal, fell on his face with an assist, uh, you know, got the crowd into the game. I thought uh, gave us a little bit of momentum uh, late in that second half and uh, was able to win the game. What about that win last night? Kind of ugly. It was a win. You know, we'll take it. Uh, We didn't play our best basketball, uh, didn't shoot a high percentage, uh, but everything's not always going to be the way you like it. You know, I thought we did a good job of hanging in there and just staying with it. Uh, You know, they uh, didn't shoot the ball uh, well that first half, and um, we certainly uh, couldn't put the ball in the basket, and we found ourselves still uh, in reach of uh, getting that game, and we uh, found a way the second half to uh, do that, get the game. Have you made some tweaks in the offense over the last few weeks to try to make a point of getting Miles involved and look for ways to get him uh, shot attempts? Kind of thing? No, we're, we're pretty much doing what we've been doing all season long. I, I just think uh, there are certain nights uh, guys are going to get more touches than others, uh, depending on uh, how teams defend us. And um, those opportunities, you know, we try to uh, get ball movement out there and uh, look for each other. And uh, some nights, you know, you're going to get probably more touches than others. I noticed last night he had, like, at the first time out, he had not uh, taken a shot, had hardly touched the ball. But then the first possession after that, it looked like maybe you had called something for him. I didn't know. Yeah, well, we, I, we, we definitely do that. If guys are not, uh, if they haven't gotten a touch or, uh, a look or an attempt, you know, try to run something to uh, get them a, l- a look or an attempt. Uh, we, I, I try to do that for, for all of our guys. Now that you've had a, a night to sleep on it, where did you see the turning point, I guess, in Brogdon yesterday? Where did you feel like you finally shook that rust off and was able to get going? Well, I, I mean, uh, we certainly looked like uh, we didn't have our flow uh, in that first half you know, with the uh, Domas uh, missing a couple games and Malcolm uh, missing a few games and uh, those guys been put back in the starting lineup. Uh, there was no chemistry, no flow uh, early in the game, but I thought they continued to stay with it and uh, came out a little bit more aggressive uh, the second half, try to establish uh, and get themselves on the defensive end of the floor and get themselves involved uh, into the game on the defensive end of the floor and uh, was able to start making some shots. So second half, uh, probably got his second win, felt a little better, uh, but he had been off for a while. And uh, it's really tough to, uh, you know, get into game shape and that rhythm, your timing and all of that uh, without plan because of the practices that, you know, we, uh, we have. We're not going live, and uh, that was really the first live action that he had seen in probably a week or two. As you approach the midpoint of the season, is there any area of play that you think we got to get better in this area? To really Rebounding, yeah. you know, keeping the ball in front of us. Uh, you know, all, I mean, we want to continue to grow and improve uh, in, in uh, all aspects of the game, but certainly uh, it starts with keeping the ball in front. You know, when you uh, 
are breaking down on the perimeter and the ball is getting into the paint, uh, the defense has to come over and help. Uh, you're out of position to rebound, to box out and rebound. So it starts with us keeping the ball in front of us uh, and then boxing, boxing out and uh, continuing to get better uh, offensively, uh, you know, executing. Has a decision been made regarding Vic in the West Coast trip yet? Whether he, goes he will not travel. Okay. He will not travel. Nate, all things considered, with Brogdon missing a third of the year, Vic still being out, how do you feel about how things have gone to this point, hitting those midway points? We've done some good things. You know, we put ourselves in a position where, um, you know, last night was a big game in the sense of, um, you know, moving up a spot, you know, uh, with Philadelphia and, uh, you know, staying in this, uh, this race and, um, you know, I think a lot, maybe people may have doubted that we could be in this spot at this time with the uh, with Victor being out and certainly uh, all of the injuries that we've had. But guys have stepped in and uh, been able to uh, play some good basketball. We've been able to uh, win some games. And why do you think this thing came together as quickly as it did with with all the injuries and I think what eight new eight new phases? Coaching. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you can say, we, we, I mean, we, we coach. I mean, we, we. I think we have a good staff, and our guys have worked hard. Uh, I think the players have certainly stepped in, and they've taken advantage of the opportunity uh, when they've gotten that opportunity. And um, I think that's the biggest key is the fact that uh, these players who have gotten opportunities to play, they've have themselves ready uh, to go. And uh, they went out. They've gone out and played good basketball. Talk about Malcolm having to get back into game shape. Obviously, Vic has been hanging overhead. He's hasn't played in a year. How can you guys prepare to get him back into game shape? Get you guys his rhythm before he's game tested. He has to play. I mean, it, uh, he'll. All of that will happen once he takes the floor and gets some games under his belt. Uh, this, this is no way of. Uh, getting him in game shape without him playing in games. Um, you know, we, uh, the, the league, the NBA has changed the, the way that they practice. Uh, and, you know, really your, your heart practices uh, ends after training camp. You know, it's basically you talk about recovery uh, and the number of games uh, that you are playing every other day. Uh, it's very difficult to have hard practices, live practices, uh, as you as we did a few years ago. Um, so that would have to come. It's going to have to come in the course of games, and I think it'll take. It's going to take him some games to catch up to uh, where these guys are at. These guys are in the best shape they're going to be in right now. Uh, players in the NBA and. He'll be just taking the floor. You almost mentioned last night that second opinion on his knee basically said that there's no more that he can do worse to it. Is he kind of just in a situation where he's got to just kind of maybe play through a little bit of pain until you guys get to the all-star break and can get some rest? Yeah, we, do, we just have to manage that. Uh, that's what I was told, that uh, he can't hurt it anymore. Uh, it's going to be some pain there. Uh, so we'll watch what uh, he does in practice and – uh, you know, I haven't had any restrictions put on the minutes that he has to play. Um, and it's something that he has to uh, play with. We're still looking a couple of weeks down the line, but once Victor does come back, will Brogdon be the guy who's most affected? Will he have to alter his game the most? And if so, what, what does he need to do? I don't think so. Uh, I don't think so. Um, you know, we haven't decided, uh, you know, whether Victor will start or if we come off the bench. You know, that'll be something that we talk about in another week or so. Um, but, no, I think Malcolm will continue to uh, do the things that he's doing now. And I don't think he has to really make uh, any adjustments to um, what he's what he's doing, how he's leading us. That's Nate McMillan talking about a variety of things, but really talking about T.J. McConnell. That's what I wanted to talk to him about because I like McConnell's energy. 
you know, like I said, over the course of a season, it's hard to keep your enthusiasm elevated from a night-to-night basis or on a night-to-night basis. And I think McConnell does a great job of bringing an energy to that team that allows them some lift from night to night. Uh, Let's talk about sports media a little bit. Found out earlier today that uh, iHeart has made the decision to discontinue the Query and Schultz show on uh, 1260 AM WNDE, and I think that's a real shame. I I think we need choices in town. I've always thought, and this goes back to my days at Emmis, where Emmis has got the 11 commandments, and one of the commandments is kind of don't crap on your medium. You know, don't crap on radio. Other stations don't do that. That build your medium. Don't crap on it. So those are my words, not necessarily the words of the of the commandment. At any rate, today, Quarian Schultz, uh, that show has been discontinued. The more local radio, the better. I hate things that are homogenized. I'm not a big fan of national radio, especially during kind of that weekdays 6A to 7P window. And, and losing Quarian Schultz as a voice in this community, I, I think, is a shame. I hate to see people lose their jobs, whoever they are, but especially these guys, because Jake and Derek, every single day, man, they tried, and they worked hard, and they tried to build a show and show some uh, an interesting dynamic between the two of them. And I always appreciated the show and that it's gone, I think is a shame. I wish Jake and Derek absolutely the best. They, again, grinders at what they do, and I'm sure they're going to bounce back and and hopefully wind up someplace in this medium, which continues to shrink. Maybe, you know what, maybe their uh, energies are better invested elsewhere because radio, once you get crapped on enough in radio, you think, okay, what am I doing? You know, I, I love this business, I love this medium, but why why do I keep going back and keep going back? For me, I, I think that radio is the most personal of all the media, and that's why I keep going back, and that's why I'll continue to go back. But at some point, it, you just got to say, you know what, the contraction, you don't contract your way to success. You cannot cut your way to growth, all right? That only lasts so long. You know, okay, we've got to make numbers, so let's cut. And then next year, we've got to make numbers, so let's cut. That happens enough time, uh, enough times, and all of a sudden, you don't have a product anymore. And that's what's happened at WNDE, and I think it's a total shame. And uh, I know the iHeart people, they try to figure out how to do as much as they can uh, with locality in, in some markets, but here it, it just obviously has not worked on WNDE to the extent that it needs to for them to be happy with it. And again, like I said, the fix is not to cut ever, ever, ever. Show me a business that has cut its way to success. I defy you to do that. Once you get to a certain point in that evolution, you're really robbing yourself of what made your product special in the first place. And then who gives a damn whether you have it or not? What, we need more portals for Dan Patrick, for God's sake? Really? Anyway, best to Jake, best to Derek. Uh, wish them nothing but success in in finding a way to land on their feet as their lives have kind of you know, they've had a setback today, but setbacks are temporary. Timing is bad sometimes. It's good other times. Timing's going to get good for both of those guys. Tomorrow morning, your timing's going to be good. If at 8 o'clock in the morning, you're tuned into Facebook Live to watch Breakfast with Kent or at about 8.15 to watch me on uh, Periscope, which is also fed on Twitter to make it extra easy for you to watch. The numbers on Twitter and Periscope have actually been outstanding of late. And so thanks to all of you who continue to listen to Breakfast with Kent and Sports and Other But Sports, all brought to you by the great people at Today's Dentistry. 317-849-2933 is the number. Call them. Hire Dr. Mike O'Neill today.